All right, so here's a question. First question I'm going to address is, um, why is it that the worship team is not open to new members? What happened? Oh, y'all just making side comments. <laughs> the question is, why is it that the worship team is not open to new members? Um, here's the thing. Officially, that's not the case. I have not stood before the pulpit and told everybody in the church that the worship team, at least if I, I don't think I did, um, to say that it's not open to new members. The worship team is open. There will be a process in regards to um, steps that people will have to take in order to join the worship team. Does that make sense? Because otherwise, what would happen is that um, if anybody joined the worship team without understanding the mission, the vision, and the purpose of the church, they may come up with the wrong mindset. Does that make sense? So what that means for us is one of the steps that we're going to be doing this year is putting together our new members orientation. Y'all hear me? New members orientation. That helps people to understand who we are, where we've come from, where we're going, as well as how we function, and that way they understand the culture of the church. Because otherwise, we don't want anybody to simply join, and then they jump into something not already becoming or understanding what they've become a part of. Does that make sense? Okay. The other piece of that is that whenever you join the worship team, the worship team just like any other piece of the church, requires a word called commitment. Everybody say commitment. That means that you can't just join the worship team and say, I'm going to sing one Sunday, and then I'm not going to sing for three weeks. Y'all hear what, what I'm saying? So the first thing, really, before you even join a worship team, you should be able to attend church regularly. Because if you only show up to church when it's your turn to sing, oh, come on now. Because y'all know sometimes we do that. Hmm? Okay. So does that answer the question, y'all? So there will be requirements that anyone who wants to join the worship team, things that they would just simply have to check mark off. It's not to say that this is a secret society and can't nobody be a part of it. Trust me, we actually have a schedule. And last month they didn't really benefit from the schedule because I heard some of them talking about, I didn't get my Sunday off. <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's putting her hand up. I'm going to have to adjust you because you were supposed to be off today. She jumped on up there. I have to print out the schedule so y'all can see y'all's schedule. Okay. But they, they would love to have you come and sing with them. They would love to. Just, and, and I don't say this to be funny, but just make sure you can sing a little bit. At least be able to sing a little bit. I'm not asking for perfection, but at least be able to sing a little bit. All right? One day we'll go, we'll, because I've, I've seen it, and we may adopt with, um, with our, one of, uh, basically we'll call it our sister church, Designer's Way, the pastor that was here last week. Their church, one of the things they do, and I love it, it's a great idea, they go through a, a worship team boot camp. It's a training course that prepares them for worship service. Because some people have never worshipped publicly or in that fashion before, and they don't know what they're getting into. And they may just stand up there and be like, or even, even freeze up because they've never sang in front of people before. So you have to prepare people for that stuff, okay? So that may be something that we adopt. Make sure you write that down, right? Here, you could write it on that. Yeah, right. There go a pen right there. Okay, thank you so much. And we're recording, too. Praise the Lord. All right, what's the next one? Alcohol, they said, you know what I say, you like me. <laughs> Check yes or no. <laughs> Will you go out with me? Check yes or no. <laughs> I'm just playing, just a little joking. 
As little kids, they still do that, baby. Huh? Yeah, they send text messages to, yeah. Alcohol, dun, dun, dun. Yes or no. Here's my response. Yes and no. Pastor, what are you talking about? There are several different um, scriptures that talks about drinking. I'll tell you that I cannot have a, a definite no on it or only a no because what each of you would be able to do is to Google whether or not drinking is against the Bible or is against the word of God or if it's permitted. And you would quickly find a scripture that Timothy was written or a letter that was written to Timothy by Paul. And he told him to drink a little wine for your, y'all know what it is? For your belly. That's King James Version. First Timothy 5 and 20. If you want to write that down, write that down. 25 and 23, write that down. First Timothy 5 and 23. I want you to also find that there's a scripture in Proverbs. It might be the 24th. I'm not sure where it talks about how wine is a mocker. Yes, it is. So here's the yes and no. Is drinking a sin? No. That baby said, listen. <laughs> said, talk, pastor. <laughs> drinking in itself is not a sin. The Bible does teach us that we should not drink into drunkenness. So when you done drunk so much to where you, I got you in just a second. Let me finish, Sister Cynthia. And also, you got the scripture in Proverbs. What's that? Use your microphone. They got to be able to hear you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6 is talking about the Bible forbids drunkenness. And I'll get back with me in a second. Okay. So being drunk is a totally different thing. The Bible teaches us that we should be sober-minded. Anything that's going to alter your state of sobriety, meaning that you can't think clearly, you shouldn't be at that place. You shouldn't have drank to the place where you can't think clearly. You can't make a clear decision anymore. Here's another thing I want you to think about as well. There are some people who have abused alcohol so much to where they choose not to even bother with it anymore. Amen. Ultimately, this boils down to one word, and it's self-control. Everybody say self-control. Self-control. In other words, each of us must learn how to control ourselves. I, as a pastor, cannot control you. Some of y'all, you probably said in your mind, I wish you would. <laughs> I cannot control you. I can't sit with you when you're at your house. I can't sit with you when you go out to eat. I can't sit with you everywhere you go. Now, that don't mean that you won't hear my voice when you're out there sometimes. Or the Lord may speak to you where you're at and say, now, you know you don't need that. But you have to be able to stand up for yourself and put on your big boy pants and your big girl drawers and everything. Oh, let me not do that. No, you have to be able to stand for yourself and to know what is my limit. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, no, I cannot tell you that it is a sin. That would be a flat out lie. But yes, as long as you are able to control your Self. I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to see what Sister Cynthia wants to add. Um, here's the thing I want you to think about. I want you to think about this. Self-control. That baby all right. That baby is all right. He is all right.
He's just reminding us why we need our children's corner back there in the corner, that, that, that hall, I mean, that, that lobby right there. And we shall have it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Here's the thing. What self-control, what that simply means for each of us um, in the church, that's what I was thinking. Thank you, Lord. The problem that we've had for so many years in the church is that because of fear, y'all remember I taught about this, I believe, in 2018. Y'all with me? Y'all paying attention? Sister Diggs, don't be a distraction, baby. This is important. All right. You could ask about who babies them is after church. <laughs> this is very, very important. Somebody's life is going to be changed by this. Amen. Here's the thing. In the church for so many years, because of fear, the preachers or the leaders in the church have responded to the fear of you getting drunk. Baby, you don't have to take him out. He ain't no distraction. He all right. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't mind. We got a house full of babies. We just endure. Amen. But the church for so many years, because they were so afraid, because a lot of people, when they would start drinking, what they do, they get drunk. And they start throwing back shots. And then you got four locos out there. You got um, all of these different types of vodkas and all this other stuff. And people would just go and they would do so much of it. Why? Because it was always considered forbidden. When you forbid somebody to do something, then the enemy uses that as a tool to say, oh, well, they don't want you to do it. Well, go and do it anyhow. And if you're going to do it, do it to the best way that you can. And then that's when you get wrapped around toilets like I was talking about before. Well, yesterday, not living your best life. But here's the thing. Because of that fear of people becoming drunk, they become a different person. They abuse people verbally and physically, make poor decisions, drink themselves into depression. Because of the fear of it, that's when the preacher said, oh, no, that's not of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And it's okay to have a fear of it, meaning that you, have, you understand that I need to, I need to watch that, but... If you're, if you're not careful, that fear will turn into control. Y'all hear me? We can see that in other areas of our life. Because we feared something, our response was to try to control it. Sister Mary, there was some times where, um, like for instance, my mama would tell me not to do something. And it wasn't to say that it was completely wrong, but she knew that it would go into something else. Because she would con try to control me. And I'm not saying anything in specific. I'm just using her as an example. Here's the thing. The answer is not control. The answer is to teach people how to control themselves. It's not for me to try to control you and make up lies about the word of God. Hmm? Yeah, you have to learn how to manage your freedom. He said, whom the son sets free is free indeed, but... I can't sit up here and tell you, oh, the Bible, the Bible says don't drink. I can't lie to you and say that because once, if you're really a disciple, you're going to start reading for yourself, and eventually you're going to see that passage in Timothy. Or you're going to see where and Passover, even communion, if you go to the Catholic church, they drink real wine. They don't drink this old Welch's grape juice. That I'm <laughs> Y'all know it tastes a little better. But they use real wine. And a lot of times they drink from the same cup. For all y'all germaphobes in here. Yeah, they do. But so I can't tell y'all that. But in this church, what I'm going to be working towards, what we're going to work towards together is a culture of saints that are mature and understand how to control themselves. Okay? All right, Sister Cynthia. I need a microphone because I need to make sure y'all hear this here. Hold on just a second. Because this is important, y'all. Give me that. Yeah, give, give. Thank you. Sister Cynthia, I'm sorry to jump in, sweetie, but what you're saying is very, very important. 
okay? Uh, my daughter, is it on? My daughter was labeled an alcoholic, not because of her excessive drinking, but the fact that she uses alcohol to deal with stress and emotions. And she was very upset about it, but I tell her, if a drink or something you're using is an answer to your stress or emotions, then you are dealing with an addiction because there is no way you know that that could be a permanent solution. And it's something that you're doing to deal with the problem temporarily. And so you're either using it um, to deal with something or to avoid dealing with something. Then that's when alcohol becomes a problem. Right. Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise for that? Amen. That is 100% facts. Amen. Amen. What's the next one? Can we talk more about Psalms in Children's Church when we have it the first Sunday, Saturday of the month? The book of Psalms? Yes. Sure, that can be something that we talk about, children. That's perfectly fine. Amen. You know, our kids, they don't have a problem with this portion because when we're in Children's Church, they bring up some of everything. Listen, we done had some very deep conversations in Children's Church for the adults that kind of be floating around. They be like, oh. Oh, maybe I need to go sit in there because <laughs> they ask really good questions in children's church. Amen. And if that's something that y'all want to talk about, understanding what the Psalms are, we can give a, a brief over, overview of what Psalms are. And in that way, you can even study it yourself and understand what you're reading. Amen. 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 All right. How much is my ties? And she wrote, she wrote amount, mm -hmm. $858. And this, and that for a fixed income, I would like to work on mission because I like working with people. Amen. So it's two parts, I guess. Okay. So the answer was already pretty much there. Um, if we reflect back, I taught a series called The Bless Up. Um, this was a very informative series. I taught this back in um, 2019. <coughs> a couple of things. In the scripture that we've been reading... Out of Proverbs chapter 3. Chapter. Yep. We actually built our seven pillars of preparation around this particular text. Proverbs chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And you're there? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Read verse 9 for me. Honor the Lord with your wealth in the first part of your harvest. Then your barns will be full of grain, and your barrels will be overflowing with wine. Read the, um, I'm going to read the New King James Version. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Okay? What that simply means, let me put it this way. Did the scripture say some increase? It said, honor him with the first fruits of all increase, okay? And so the question is, you know, if you're on a fixed income, that means for our children who may not understand what a fixed income is, that means that you're more than likely receiving either Social Security or a pension of some kind, and you only receive a set amount each month. And then the problem, and I, I don't want to go too far with this, um, the problem that you all may also face is that um, if you're on Medicare, which more than likely you are, Medicare is taken out, out of the check as well, which if I'm correct right now is around $144 or so, yeah, per month, and that comes out of your check. And then depending on where you live, you have to pay for where you live at. Okay? So there are a lot of different pieces there. The only thing that I can tell you is that the Bible does teach us that we are to give him the first fruit of all of our increase. The first fruit is considered the tithe. It is the first portion of our income. Okay? Y'all with me? Amen. It's the first portion of our income. Now, without jumping too deep into this, and let me answer that other question, what exactly is the tithe? The tithe is 10%. So, for instance, real quick, easy math, 
if I received $1,000 on my paycheck, how much is 10% of $1,000? $100. $100 would be 10% of my gross income. Thank you, Lady Brooks. Because it's increased, right? Our gross income is exactly what we worked for. Now, we know that Uncle Sam and the government takes out its portions. You know, the, you see the income tax, the Medicare tax, and all of that other stuff comes out of our check. Yeah, I know the eyes are rolling now. <laughs> but God's portion is off of the gross. Does that make sense? Amen. Now, what this does for us is it makes us to be accountable for our actions and everything else that follows. What that means is that if I have prioritized God as the first, if I have prioritized him as the first, that means that I'm going to be careful of everything else I spend my money on. That tells me, in reality, I have no business getting a two for five every other day. Oh, y'all better hear me what I'm talking about today. You'll realize that going, and you know, some of us done got tired of 2K, but going to 2K every week ain't necessary. It means that, oh, Lord, have mercy. You have to learn how to manage your income. This even goes back to what we just talked about. Everybody say self-control. So that means when everybody else that you may see who may be spending loosely, you have to be able to tell yourself, no, I'm not going to go to Red Lobster with them this week. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to go home and eat some leftovers from the overflow. Oh, y'all got to hear me today. We don't see it that way. Because someone say, I don't eat leftovers. You're a little booze yourself. Let me help you out today. I'm coming for you today. No, hear me what I say. He said, I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. You didn't even realize that that food left over. Remember how when Jesus said he fed the five, the 5,000 men with two fish and five loaves of bread and there were 10 baskets of leftovers? That's overflow, y'all. You can live off of that. You can eat some more with what was left over. All right, I think I done said enough about that. And the other part for that person, um, you want to work in the missions department, um, baby, just come see us and we'll figure it out. All right? Whomever that is, if that's your desire, I will even hook you up to work, um, hook you up to work with our CARES ministry. Um, or you can also, if you desire, you can team up with Sister Varnes and you can help with our actual benevolence ministry. Okay? Amen. All right. I've seen that a lot of people state that Jesus was made by the government to control people. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? The question is, or they've said that there are a lot of people who say, and here go our, our YouTube wizards, our YouTube prophets, YouTube specialists. They say that the Bible or that Jesus was man-made so that the government could control people. Here's my first response. The Word of God teaches us that the Bible was inspired of holy men by God. It's written by holy men inspired by God. Can you pull up that scripture for me, please? Because I want to make sure that we can write this down. The Bible was written by holy men inspired by God. Now, Here's the problem. The problem that we have in this world, and this ties into one of the other questions that I saw um, further down the road, and we'll come to that when we get there. One of the problems that we run into with this thing that we have called free will is that people have the ability to do whatever with it that they desire. God allows anybody to do with anything that they decide to do because it's called free will. What did I say earlier? I said that because of fear, hear me what I say, because of fear, preachers, and I'm not talking about all preachers, 
But in the African-American church, there's a lot of times where, even in the, in the Caucasian church too, because you got some that are extreme holiness, and I, I know that's a real, I can't even say that. There are some who misuse scripture. Mm-hmm. So it's not just something that happens outside of the church. It's something that happens in the church where people will use the scripture to control people when in all actuality, when you read the Bible for yourself, you'll realize that Jesus was against the foolishness that they set up or these laws that people put in place, these man-made laws, how they were trying to control people. Jesus was absolutely against it. And what he did with the New Testament, which is called the New Covenant, when he came in, he more or less came to do a reset on the law. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Now, the only way that you'll know this, and we talked about this in Sunday school this morning, the only way that you'll know it as a disciple is when you spend time in the Word of God. Because you will come across somebody. Brother Antoine was talking about this this morning. He said somebody came to him and started quoting stuff to him about the Scriptures and then turned around and said an expletive about Jesus. He said, blank Jesus. Yeah, they said it. At least that's what he shared with me. And there are a lot of people who feel that way as well. I've seen some, some of us that are connected to us have posted things on Facebook and whatnot about stuff like that. Here's the truth. You need to know the truth for yourself. You cannot go here Sunday by Sunday putting your weight on what pastor says alone. Because one day, you're going to have to hold an account for yourself. What did you do? Did you spend time in his word to know his word? Did you learn about who Jesus really is, or did you just know him based on what people said he was? Sister Cynthia, I'm going to give you a moment because we run a low on time. No, go ahead. I just want to say there, we, we believe the history books because there's evidence. There's plenty of history about the life of Christ, but mm-hmm. where the faith comes in is about the resurrection. That's what people like to argue. So in order to know that, that comes by faith, but you have to spend time with him for yourself to get that, the evidence of that. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. What's the next one? The scripture is Second Peter chapter 1, verses um, 21. And it says, No prophecy ever came from what some person wanted to say, but people were led by the Holy Spirit and spoke words from God. And the next one is, I wonder if we can have good food in the back daily in the <laughs> lobby. <laughs> it says daily. I don't know if they mean Sundays, but it's a daily, so. If y'all hear somebody's stomach rumbling that so you ignore them, that might be that person. <laughs> they ask whether or not we can have food every Sunday, or they put daily. They put daily. It says daily in the lobby, specifically. Okay. But Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> this year is a year of wisdom. We're building on wisdom. And really one of the key things is stewardship in this year, okay? So stewardship says that we have to manage our finances accordingly. I'm sorry? Well, we're not going to sell because I don't want us to get in the habit of selling stuff like that. I mean, if we had a restaurant, that would be something totally different. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? But I don't want us to get in the habit of having a little snack bar backed up because that's then y'all will be putting y'all finger up in the middle of church talking about. <laughs> yeah, let me get some of them fruit snacks, the ones that we used to have in school. Yeah, let me get some of them and that big cookie for a dollar. Yeah, let me get one of them. And oh, y'all got them peanut butter and jelly bars. Yeah, let me get one of them too. I ain't seen that in about 25 years. No, um, what I would love to do one day is when, when we are positioned to do so, I've seen, where, um, I've seen where churches will come together to fellowship monthly. 
the thing is, we don't necessarily have the space for that fellowship. One day we will when we expand um, our facility out. Y'all saw the little picture up on the wall when you first come in, up high on the wall. That's a representation of what is to come here at the church. The facility will expand. Today we can't do that. One day we will, at least once a month. But it's not something that we could do every single week. Okay? What is your least slash favorite part of doing pastoral ministry? What is my least favorite part of doing ministry? This is a tough question. Um, no, it ain't. I'm not going to say dealing with y'all. I would never say nothing like that. <laughs> no, one of the most difficult parts of doing ministry is what we did on yesterday. That's one of the most difficult moments of ministry. Um, it's difficult what we experienced last year. We were just talking about a few moments ago. When you walk and talk with people, even when you pray, and you see God answered your prayer, because even for Miss McFadden, I prayed with Roger. She was in a coma. She came out of that coma. God answered my prayer. But then she ended up going a different way. I couldn't control what God did, but I have to remain faithful or keep my faith in who he is. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's a difficult piece. It's having to submit to his will and say, God, I trust your, your choices. I trust your direction. I, I trust what you do. I may not completely understand it. Death is something that we'll never fully understand, but it is something that is absolute, meaning it is an appointment that none of us can miss. None of us can miss that. So I hope that answers your question. What's the other part? It said, what's my least favorite? Oh, least favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next question is three-part question. It says, the first one, would Bishop be willing to join us via computer on some occasions is the first question. Um, I'm not exactly sure exactly what that question meant in specific. Um, whether it mean that he join us as far as like a video chat, um, that wouldn't necessarily be exactly what would happen. Uh, Bishop being a part of the services in regards to watching us online live, um, that will be something that will start up again this year. Um, there is some equipment that we have to purchase in order to make sure that we stream more reliably, okay? Because we were having problems where our stream would be inconsistent sometimes. Sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it wouldn't. And we have to invest in the right things to make sure that we're able to stream consistently. Now, Bishop, if Bishop was able to, Bishop would drive down here. <laughs> I see his daughter shaking her head. The last times I've been talking to Bishop, Bishop has been figuring out ways to get behind the wheel. Y'all hear me? By his, now you know he ain't got no business driving by himself, but Bishop will do whatever Bishop want to do. And so soon enough, we shall see Bishop walk through these doors, whether it be him by himself or somebody escorting him down here. But we thank God for Bishop. And what is the next question? Will there, mm, I feel conviction. Mm -mm. Will, well, excuse me, I can't even read the question, Jesus. <laughs> will there be exercise classes by the church as was mentioned before? I guess I can answer that question. <laughs> so at the moment, I am working with our trainer, and we are looking at dates in April. Amen? And we will um, do it quarterly. But we are working on that, and we had to reconfigure a lot of stuff. But we are looking at dates in April. So uh, still five, it'll still be $5. So when we get together, we'll have smoothies, like little stuff for everybody. So the $5 is going to be to pay for all of that stuff. But it'll still be $5, and we should have a date soon, but it will be in April. Amen. 
Hey, felt man. conviction. Huh? <laughs> What's the last one? Um, is there any? Is there an annual picnic here at Thrive Church? Yes, we do have an annual picnic. Our annual picnic was canceled this past year because of unforeseen and uncontrollable circumstances. Okay? But we will have our annual picnic this year with the help of the Lord. All right? Amen. Amen. Can all get announcements? Can everyone get a copy of the announcements. Um, we will not print out announcements specifically for everyone, but I will tell you this. Sister Bolden uh, says that I believe almost every week that if you want a copy of the announcements, to simply come and see her. Amen. Now, I will say this as well. Um, I'll have to make sure I do this. Make a note of this, Sister Bolden. Um, we can send out a copy of the calendar, the church calendar, uh, via text message to everybody to give you a link and you can save it to your phone or your tablet. We can send you an email <laughs> and that way you have a copy of the calendar electronically. Amen. Okay? I'm sorry? Well, sweetheart, if you need a physical copy of the announcements, you go and see Sister Bolden. Amen. Does everybody understand? Sister Bolden, wave your hand. So everybody, that sister boat, she got a name, turn your name tag around so they can see. That she got a name tag and everything. <laughs> it say Deborah, right? Uh, yes. Hi, she Lord. is Deborah Bolden. Amen. All right? Go ahead. And if you needed to see who's on the prayer list because you want to pray for them, there's a copy that's in the lobby every week, and you can jot down the names on your personal prayer list, okay? Last but not least, it says, my grandson asked, since God knows everything, why didn't he stop Satan from doing all he did? Why did he not stop Satan from doing all that he did? So remember I said that there's a thing called fear that in turn causes us to do what, y'all? Control. Everybody say control. Fear causes control. All right? Fear causes control. He said that when there's fear, that means that there's an absence of love. This is in 1 John chapter 4, if I'm correct. Can you pull that up, please? And he said that perfect love casts out all fear. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear what I'm saying? God loved us so much. <laughs> He's a handful. Yes, you a handful. He has such an infectious laugh. She said she need a ruler. That's old school, y'all. I done got beat by yardsticks when I was a child. Oh, you brought back flashbacks. Hold that hand up. Ah! Okay, back to it. Here's the thing. God loved us so much. He loves us so much that when he created us, he did not create robots. Robots have no choice in what they do. Y'all hear me? Robots cannot choose what they do. They do whatever they're programmed to do. We are not robots. He did not build an army of robots. What God did, because of love, because remember, love doesn't control. It doesn't have to. Everything that he created, every being that he created, even his angels, he gave them something called free will. Free will means that you have the choice to do whatever you want to do. Unfortunately, what people decide to do with their free will can be evil. Y'all hear what I say? So, the reason why he doesn't stop Satan, the reason why he doesn't stop you when you do what you want to do, is because he loves you so much. 
that he wants you to be able to make the decision to do what's right. Giving our life to Christ is a decision, greatest decision we could ever make. Amen. Doing what's right is a decision. All of it is a decision. Amen. Okay? What's the scripture? First John chapter 4, verse 18. Where God is love, there is no fear, because God is, God's perfect love takes away fear. It is his punishment that makes a person, excuse me, God's perfect love takes away fear. It is his punishment that makes a person fear. So his love is not made perfect in the one who is, excuse me, so, so his love is not made perfect in the one, the one who has fear. That's it. <laughs> See, that's, the, y'all, that's y'all motivation to sow into the vision fund. <laughs> you ain't got to run away, sweetie. That's just reminding them every Sunday, let me sow into the vision fund because God is going to teach these babies. We're going to have a, a section just for them where they can be taught in color and everything else during service. Not just on the iPad to keep them busy, but having them learning about Jesus. All right? Okay, one last thing before we finish up, and um, just a quick correction um, in regards to communion. Communion is not following service. Communion is now a part of service because we want to make sure that we use our time wisely. There's no need for us to space it out, and we want to just go ahead and keep it as a part of the worship service. It is a part of worship, and then we close out afterwards, all right? In regards to fellowship, everybody say fellowship. The question was, why we can't eat together following service in the lobby every Sunday? I want to remind you that we as a body, we have the ability to join with our brothers and sisters and fellowship together. Let me help you see what this looks like. This looks like you can go to Publix, get a box of 20 wings for about $11, Get you one of those pre-made dishes of macaroni and cheese that's real good in the, in the refrigerated section. Get the right one. It's good at Publish, yeah. And then get you a couple cans of green beans. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about in here. Less than, tw- yeah, Hawaiian bread. Less than $25 you done spent. And it could feed probably five to six people. And y'all have the ability to sit and laugh together and, and talk about each other and laugh and everything else. Do whatever you want to do together as a body. It doesn't have to always happen here in a church. The church is a representation of what we can do outside of this building. It don't have to be just me only partnering up with my family. We can grab some people that ain't necessarily a part of my blood family and just say, hey, let's eat together. All right? Everybody say fellowship. Fellowship. We can do it it. together. Together. Amen. Did y'all enjoy that? Did did I answer y'all questions today? Is that all right? Brother Antoine, you 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 can play. And so... With everything that we've said so far, I, I want to just simply give the opportunity for somebody to make the greatest decision that they can make. If everybody could stand all over the building. We talked a lot about free will. And a lot of, a lot of it boils down to just that. It boils down to God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that was his choice to do that that whosoever meaning anybody who chooses to believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life it boils down to a choice close your eyes and bow your heads in the house before I call and extend the invitation I want to pray for every one of you grab somebody hand next to you just grab somebody 
Father, right now in the precious, matchless name of Jesus Christ, Father, we first say thank you for, we thank you for this moment that we've had today in the service. Father, where the questions that were on our hearts that we could ask and receive an answer. Because, Father, you said if any of us lacks wisdom to let him ask of God, Father, we ask today, and I did the best that I could by your spirit to answer the questions. Father, I pray that for every heart and every mind in this house that we would grow stronger in you, that we would grow deeper in you, that we would grow wiser in you, God, that we would have a greater passion for your word, that our commitment would grow, that our fellowship would grow, that our unity would grow, God. Father, that we would continue to be effective and, and developing and thriving disciples in Jesus Christ. Father, we don't want to just be church attenders, but we want to be your body and function. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now release that hand and keep your eye. Yeah, you can put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise in here.